Oh, right. <laughs> I just had a run. I've had a five kilometer run for now 10 days in a row, so I'm getting back into daily exercise. That's good. I'm actually up at my parents at the moment because my brother is back from Indonesia and it's nice to sort of spend a bit of family time with people that you don't see too often, unfortunately. So yeah, that's what I'm doing up here, but none of that is what I want to talk about today. the Cybertruck because wow that's quite something isn't it I tell you I was watching the webcast as I'm sure a large number of you guys were and it rolled onto the stage and I was like what like it like literally my brain couldn't quite understand what it was seeing properly and I've heard quite a few people say that they had a similar reaction. Let's be honest, it does look quite different, doesn't it? It's not, not your run-of-the-mill, ordinary pickup truck. Oh no, this is classic Elon Musk. I suppose, honestly, I didn't think it looked very good when I first saw it. It was just so different. Over the, the days after the webcast, my brain did start to get used to the idea. that convinced me that actually maybe it doesn't look so bad after all is that looks are very much a subjective thing you know what people think looks good now is not what people thought looks good 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 100 years ago you know it's completely subjective however function is not subjective function is objective and the reason it looks the way it does seems to be because there are good functional reasons why that means it works better and is cheaper. For example, stainless steel, no paint. You can make it out of a much harder material because it doesn't have the curves. You don't need to use a stamping press. You just need to fold, basically, a bit like origami. The fact that you have all of those angles and straight lines helps the, the, the structural rigidity of that, would you call it a monocoque? But having all of that strength in the structure and the design of it makes it lighter comparatively. Obviously then you have to put the batteries in which will make it a lot heavier, but it helps with the range, it helps with the performance, it helps with the strength and durability. I mean, one of my friends was telling me, well, I don't like the looks and it's massive, so could you imagine trying to park that in the co-op? And I thought to myself, yeah, I could imagine parking it in the co-op because it means I won't have to worry about a door ding. If somebody opens the door into the cyber truck, it's not gonna be the cyber truck that's got a dent in it, is it? The $50,000 question is, would I buy one? I do like the specs, and although it's massive, and that would normally be a, a bit of a problem, I love the carrying capacity, and because it's effectively built like a tank, I don't think I really mind the, the size either. One of the big things that I've never liked about my Model S is that it's so big. But the thing about the Model S is it's big, but it doesn't look like it should be that big because it's a sedan form factor. It's not a four by four, but it's actually wider than a lot of four by fours and longer than a lot of four by fours. So you're going down a small one track country lane Somebody's coming the other way, they see you and they think, oh, it's an ordinary car. I will just be able to pass, there'll be enough room. Then they get a bit closer and they realize, oh no, it's a Tesla and it's taking up three quarters of the road. You're not gonna get that with the Cybertruck, however, because the Cybertruck is gonna look like a tank. People are gonna see that coming and go, oh God, and they're gonna go hide behind a bush as you drive by. And the fact that you can close up the back, that's really important for me as well because hauling capacity is not that useful for me, if stuff can get nicked out of it. And I love the ramp, that's awesome as well. I can see so many people that own dogs thinking that is just the absolute best thing since sliced bread. And wheelbarrows, if, you know, if you're actually using it as a working truck, which I think probably most people will because it seems to my eye to have been designed as a proper working truck. You know, things like the power outlets, the, you know, the large flatbed at the back there. 
the durability, the fact that they've not bothered painting it. So here's the thing. Over the sort of week or so since this webcast has come out, my position has evolved from mm, to mmm to I want one. I think probably it's going to wind up being my next Tesla. I'll probably still keep the Model S anyway because it probably won't be worth selling it. But yeah, I think uh, I think a Cybertruck. I can see a Cybertruck in my future. All-wheel drive, mountain climbing goodness with loads of stuff in the back. In the past, I've never really thought that trucks were a good idea, unless you desperately need one, because they use so much fuel to drive around, they cost a fortune. That's not gonna be a problem for the Cybertruck, because it's not gonna use a noticeable amount more electricity than my Model S, which barely uses a noticeable amount of electricity anyway. And I'll tell you, in 122,000 miles in my Model S, I've been very happy with the reliability of it from a mechanical point of view. I mean, there are things that have gone wrong, things that have need fixing, of course, but for the most part, those things haven't been some massive mechanical breakdown. Touch wood. If you combine that durability and, and mechanical reliability with something that is functionally designed for hauling and being rugged and getting traction in on almost any surface, then, yeah, I, I'm sold. I am sold. In fact, I'd go further than that. I think there is a chance that the Cybertruck could be Tesla's answer to the question, how do we become the world's number one car manufacturer? Obviously, they're going to need to be able to make a lot of batteries. The Model 3 sells in good numbers, Model S sells in good numbers, Model X sells in good numbers. Model, Model 3 sells in very good numbers. I think the Cybertruck will do very well as well. It had 200,000 pre-orders in the space of a long weekend. Now, in fairness, the pre-orders for the Cybertruck were only $100 rather than the $1,000 you had to put down for, say, a Model 3. And there are less pre-orders for the Cybertruck than there were for the Model 3. But the Model 3 was something that people, they knew what they wanted. They wanted a smaller, cheaper Model S. With the Cybertruck, it's a bit different. Firstly, they're trying to convince people who are not natural electric vehicle owners, truck owners, to move towards something that is quite a bit more climate sound, shall we say. And they're doing that by trying to make a product that is just actually better than their existing pickup trucks. And I think that's why it's gonna wind up doing very well because when you actually look at it from any kind of distance, it becomes obvious. The Cybertruck is a better truck than your average Ford F-150. It certainly looks very different, which I actually do count as a plus because generally speaking, all trucks look the same, which is boring. It's got a very comparable towing rating. It's got a nice big bed at the back. It's got that ramp. It's got the fact that you can close it up. It's got a pretty decent range extremely good performance figures from a 0 to 60 point of view. And because it's got electric motors, it's also gonna have very good low speed traction and torque, but the wheel is gonna be very good, I would imagine, which means it's going to be able to climb things that other trucks struggle with and find traction where other trucks struggle to find traction. It's obviously because it's electric, it's got a very clean underside. You're not going to snag a, a bit of exhaust on the underside of this thing, oh no. As we know, it is hammer proof, not steel ball proof, but uh, close to. They asked their engineers to design the perfect pickup truck. And engineers being engineers, they designed it from a mathematician's point of view, which is why it's got all those triangular shapes because that's the strongest shape. It's made using materials and techniques which will enable it to be extra durable but not add weight. Things like that, just little clever things which when you add them all up, what they actually end up being is a substantial step change in what that vehicle can be. That's something that I think Tesla has always tried to do. I think it's something that Elon Musk always tries to do. Whatever it is he's, his latest project is, he always tries to make it a step change forwards because it makes the world so much more interesting for everyone. I think Elon Musk is quite right there 
it, it's much more exciting to live in an interesting, fun world with rockets that land themselves and men on Mars and we're all driving around in Mars rovers here on Earth. I'm looking forward to getting one of these, definitely. I might actually put down a deposit. I don't normally bother putting down a deposit in the UK because with the whole right-hand drive, left-hand drive thing, you tend to wind up not having to wait much longer if you don't put a deposit. By the time they've, they're selling cars here, the production is ramped anyway, so they get through the backlog of pre-orders in about a month, maybe two. You'll, you get your car in the third month. Well, I can wait three months, so maybe I won't. But it's only 100 quid, so maybe I will. I think that's everything I want to say about the Cybertruck right at this exact second. Other than to say the looks, just purely the looks, are growing on me as I become more and more used to them. <laughs> Quite honestly, they're so different. It really does make your brain just go, what? Okay. Right, I hope you've enjoyed today's vlog post. If you have, remember to like it, share it, subscribe if you haven't already, and follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you don't already. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye. Oh my God, I've actually, more or less. Well, you'd think, wouldn't you? But for some reason, when I natter into the camera for 15 minutes, it does take quite a long time to edit that. And also, I've got to put in a bunch of shots of this Cybertruck and snips of video and stuff like that. So I've got a lot of other bits and bobs that I've got to find and cut out the right bit of. And it'll be more work than you might think, but hopefully less work than some. Yeah. And this will be the outtake.